Blend bars, doji bars, and climaxes. The market either is trending on the chart in front of you or it is not. When it is not, it is in some kind of trading range, which is composed of trends on smaller time frames. When two or more bars largely overlap, they constitute a trading range. The trading range can have many shapes and many names, like flags, pennants, and triangles, but the names are irrelevant. All that matters is that the bulls and bears are in some equilibrium, often with one side slightly stronger. On the level of an individual bar, it is either a trend bar or a trading range bar. Either the bulls or bears are in control of the bar or they are largely in equilibrium, a one bar trading range. The two most important concepts in trading are that there is a mathematical basis for everything, and that at any moment when you are convinced of the market's direction, there is someone equally smart who believes the opposite. Never be convinced of anything, and always be open to the possibility that the market will do the exact opposite of what you believe. Although the market at times is imbalanced and moves strongly up or down for many bars, most of the time it is relatively balanced, even though it might not appear to be so to a beginner. Every tick is a trade, which means that there was someone who thought that the price was a good value to sell, and someone else who thought it was a good value to buy. Since the market is controlled by institutions and they are smart, both of these traders are smart and were acting rationally, and both have strategies that they have tested and shown to be profitable. One of the most important skills that a trader can develop is the ability to understand whether a trend bar is the beginning or end of a move. If you see a strong bull trend bar only as bullish and a strong bear. 59. 60. Price action. Trend bar only as bearish, you are missing what half of the big players are doing. Around the high of every bull trend bar, there are bulls buying the strength. There are also other bulls who are looking for a pullback and will buy near the low of the bar if the market gets there. However, it is important to realize that there are other bulls who expect the strength to fail and they are using the strength as an opportunity to sell out of their longs and take profits. There are also bears who see the bull trend bar, no matter how strong, as a climactic, failed effort by the bulls, and are shorting around the high of the bar. Some were sitting on the sidelines, waiting for a strong bull trend bar, so that they could short at what they consider to be an overdone rally. Other bears will short below the low of the bar, since they will see this as a sign of weakness that could lead to a tradable reversal. Similarly, there are profit-taking bears and new bulls buying at the bottom of every bear trend bar, no matter how strong the bar appears to be, and there are other bears who are looking to short near its high, and bulls looking to buy above its high. For a trader, it is most useful to think of all bars as being either trend bars or non-trend trading range bars. Since the latter is an awkward term and most are similar to doji bars, it is simpler to refer to all non-trend bars as dojis. If the body appears tiny or non-existent on the chart, the bar is a doji, neither the bulls nor the bears control the bar, and the range. On a 5-minute mini chart, a doji body is non-existent or only a tick or two large, depending on the size of the bar. However, on a daily or weekly Google chart, the body can be 100 ticks $1 or more and still have the same significance as a perfect doji, and therefore it makes sense to refer to it as a doji. The determination is relative and subjective, and it depends on the market and the time frame. In all of trading, close is close enough and perfection is rare. If something closely resembles a pattern, what follows will likely be what would be expected to follow the perfect pattern. Subdividing bars with small bodies into a variety of subtypes like hanging man, hammer, or harami adds little to a trader. The fundamental issue is whether the bar and market are trying to trend, realizing that most of the time it is something in between. It is far more important to ascertain the strength of any trend than it is to spend time worrying about a precise name for a particular bar. You make money by placing trades, not by worrying about lots of meaningless, colorful names. If there is a body, then the close trended away from the open and the bar is a trend bar. Obviously, if the bar is large and the body is small, there was not much trending strength. Also, within the bar, as seen on a smaller time frame, there may have been several swings of largely sideways movement, but this is irrelevant because you should focus on only one chart. 
Larger bodies, in general, indicate more strength, but an extremely large body after a protracted move or a breakout can represent an exhaustive, climactic end of a trend, and no trade should be taken until more price action unfolds. A series of strong trend bars is the sign of a trend bars, doji bars, and climaxes. 61. Help trend and will usually be followed by a further extreme, even if a pullback immediately ensues. Every trend bar is simultaneously 1. A spike, 2. A breakout, 3. A gap, as discussed in Book 2, all breakouts are functionally identical to gaps and, therefore, so are all trend bars and 4. A part or all of a vacuum and a climax, a pause or reversal bar ends a climax after one or consecutive trend bars. One or more of these four characteristics might be dominant in a particular trend bar and each offers trading opportunities, as will be discussed throughout the books. When it is a climax and the start of a reversal, it is due to the vacuum effect. For example, if a buy spike is followed by a reversal, the sharp rally was more than likely due to strong bears stepping aside and bulls waiting to exit longs until the market reached an area where both had been waiting to sell. If instead there is follow-through buying, then the buying was not due to the vacuum effect but rather a combination of strong bulls buying and strong bears believing that the market would rally further. Traders use the overall context to determine which is more likely. Their assessment will lead them to look to buy, sell, or wait. Obviously, every spike that leads to a reversal is a manifestation of the vacuum effect, but I reserve the term for spikes that end in a reversal at an obvious support or resistance level, dueling lines, discussed in Book 2. Incidentally, crashes are examples of the vacuum effect. Both the 1987 and 2009 stock market crashes collapsed to just below the monthly trend line, where the strong buyers reappeared and strong bears took profits, leading to a sharp reversal upward. Also, stock traders routinely buy strong bear spikes in bull trends because they see the spike as a value play. Although they usually look for strong price action before buying, they will often buy a stock that they like at the bottom of a sharp sell-off, especially to the area of the bull trend line, even if it has not yet reversed up. They believe that the market is, temporarily, incorrectly underpricing the stock because of some news event, and they buy it because they doubt it will remain discounted for long. They don't mind if it falls a little further, because they doubt that they can pick the exact bottom of the pullback, but they want to get in during the sell-off because they believe that the market will quickly correct its mistake and the stock will soon rally. Pullbacks, which are discussed in Book 2, are often strong spikes that make traders wonder if the trend has reversed. For example, in a bull trend, there might be a large bear trend bar or two that breaks below the moving average and maybe several ticks below a trading range. Traders will then wonder if the always in direction is in the process of flipping to down. What they need to see is follow through selling in the form of maybe just one more bear trend bar. Everyone will watch that next bar closely. If it is a large bear trend bar, most traders will believe that the reversal has been confirmed and will start shorting at the market and on pullbacks. If the bar instead has a bull close, they will suspect that the reversal attempt has failed and that the sell-off is just a brief, but sharp, markdown in price and therefore a buying opportunity. Beginning traders see the strong bear spike and ignore. 62. Price action. The <laughs> bull trend in which it is occurring. They sell the close of the bear trend bar, below its low, any small bounce over the next few bars, and below any low 1 or low 2 sell setup. Smart bulls are taking the opposite side of those trades because they understand what is happening. The market is always trying to reverse, but 80% of those reversal attempts fail and become bull flags. At the time the reversal attempt is occurring, the two or three bear bars can be very persuasive, but without follow-through selling, the bulls see the sell-off as a great opportunity to get long again near the low of a brief sell climax. Experienced bulls and bears wait for these strong trend bars and sometimes step aside until one forms. Then they come into the market and buy because they view it as the climactic end of the selling. The bears buy back their shorts and the bulls re-establish their longs. This also happens at the end of a trend when the strong traders are waiting for one large trend bar. For example, in a strong bear trend near a support area, there will often be a late breakout in the form of an unusually large bear trend bar. Both the bulls and bears stopped buying until they saw it form. 
At that point, both buy the sell climax, because the bears see it as a great price to take profits on their shorts and the bulls see it as a brief opportunity to buy at a very low price. Sometimes that bear spike can close on its low, and beginning traders are shocked that the market then slowly or quickly reverses back up. How can a large bear trend bar that closes on its low be followed by a small bull inside bar and then a reversal up to a new high of the day? What they don't realize is that on a smaller time frame, that strong bear trend bar had a clear reversal pattern, like maybe a three push pattern on a 100 tick chart of the Emini. However, even if they watched and traded the smaller time frame chart, they would lose money because the patterns form too quickly for traders to analyze them accurately. Remember, all patterns are the result of computer algorithms, and computers have a huge speed advantage. It is always a mistake to compete against an opponent who has an edge in a game where the margin for error is so small. When speed is critical, the computers have a huge edge, and traders should not trade against them. Instead, they should pick a time frame, like a 5 menu chart, where they have time to carefully process the information. A trend bar is a critical component of a climax, and a climax is a critical component of a reversal, but traders often incorrectly use the term climax as synonymous with reversal. Every trend bar is a climax or part of a climax, and the climax ends with the first pause bar. For example, if there are three consecutive bull trend bars and then the next bar is a small bull trend bar with a prominent tail at the top, an inside bar, a doji, or a bear trend bar, then the climax ended with the three bull trend bars. This three bar buy climax simply means that the market went too far too fast and that the enthusiasm to buy has quickly decreased to the point that the market has become two-sided. Some bulls are taking profits and would like to buy more at a lower price, and some bears are starting to short. If the bulls overwhelm the trend bars, doji bars, and climaxes. 63. The rally will resume, but if the bears overwhelm the bulls, the market will reverse down in a bear trend bar, which will be acting as a bear breakout, and the reversal pattern will be a climactic reversal top. The buy climax is a move up, and the climactic reversal top is the move up followed by the move down. The bull trend bar is acting more as a climax and the bear trend bar is acting more as a breakout, and together they create a climactic reversal top or a buy climax and reversal. All strong bull trends have strong bull trend bars or consecutive bull trend bars, and each is a biclimax but most don at Beckham FF first go for climax to crevasal. The reversal requires a biclimax and then a bear breakout, which is a strong bear trend bar. The bull and bear trend bars do not have to be consecutive and are often separated by many bars, but both are required to have a climactic reversal. In fact, every reversal at the top of a bull market is a climactic reversal, whether or not it looks like one on the chart in front of you. If the bull reverses with a strong bear reversal bar on the 5 minute chart, it is still a climactic reversal, but only on a smaller time frame. Although it is not worth searching for ever smaller time frames for that perfect spike up followed by a spike down, it is always there. Also, whenever there is a climax top that takes place over many bars, it is always a single reversal bar on some higher time frame chart, and again it is not worth looking for the perfect time frame just to see the perfect reversal bar. Remember, traders are all looking for an edge and computer charting programs allow traders to quickly create charts based on every conceivable interval, and there will be traders out there basing their decisions on everything imaginable. This includes charts based not only on time but also on the number of ticks, the number of contracts traded, and any combination of these. There will always be someone out there who sees that perfect reversal bar and someone else who sees the spike up and then the spike down, but you do not have to see either if you understand what the chart in front of you is telling you. The opposite is true for climactic bottoms where a sell climax is followed by a reversal up. Climactic reversals are discussed more in chapters 5 and 6 on signal bars, and again in book 3. An ideal trend bar is one with a moderate size body, indicating that the market trended away from the open of the bar by the time the bar closed. The minimum is a close above the open in a bull trend bar, indicated by a white candle body in these books. The bulls can demonstrate stronger control by having the body be about the same size as or larger than that of the median body size over the past 5 or 10 bars. Additional signs of strength are discussed in another section and include the open being on or near the low, 
The close on or near the high, the close at or above the closes and highs of several prior bars, the high above the high of one or more prior bars, and the tails being small. If the bar is very large and especially if it develops in a trend, it might represent exhaustion or a one-bar false breakout that is trapping new bulls, only to reverse down in the next bar or two. The opposite is true for bear trend bars. 64. Price Action All trend bars are attempts to break out into a trend, but as discussed in the next chapter, most breakouts fail. Also, all trends begin with a trend bar, which might have a body that might be only a little larger than the bodies of the recent bars. Sometimes it is large and followed by several other trend bars in the same direction, which indicates a stronger trend and one more likely to have follow through. Weenth market is in a trading range or a bear trend and is starting to create a number of bull trend bars, it is a sign of buying pressure and it is an attempt by the bulls to take control of the market and make it bull trend. Traders are buying small pullbacks within the bar because they believe that the market will soon be higher, and there might not be a bigger pullback for them to buy. When they buy in the f final seconds of the bar as it is closing, they are afraid that the next bar might open near its low and then rally even more. They feel a sense of urgency and are eager to get long now, rather than wait for a pullback that might not come until after the market is much higher. They are buying below the low of the prior bar and below swing lows, and the market is transitioning into a bull leg or trend. The bears are no longer shorting heavily at the new lows. They are taking profits, and more and more bulls are seeing new lows as a great value and are buying them. If bear bodies are starting to accumulate in a bull trend or trading range, it is a sign of selling pressure and the bears might soon be able to create a downtrend. For example, if the market is in a bull trend and has had a couple of pullbacks with large bear trend bars, and now has entered a trading range and there have been several swings with prominent bear trend bars, the selling pressure is building and the bears might soon be able to reverse the market into a bear leg or bear trend. Selling pressure is cumulative, and the more bare bodies and the larger the bodies, the more likely it is that the pressure will reach a critical point and overwhelm the bulls and drive the market down. The opposite is true of buying pressure. If there is a trading range or a bear trend and the bull trend bars are becoming larger and more numerous, the buying pressure is building and this makes a rally more likely. Strong bulls create buying pressure and strong bears create selling pressure. Strong bulls and bears are institutional traders, and the cumulative effect of these strong traders determines the direction of the market. For example, signs of buying pressure in a bear trend include tails at the bottoms of bars, two bar reversals or bull reversal bars at the bottoms of down swings, and an increasing number of bars with large bull bodies. It is the strong bulls buying at each new low and at the bottom of each bar that moves the close-up off the low of the bar. This can only happen if the strong bears no longer feel that there is value in shorting at these lower prices. These bulls are willing to buy more if the market falls further, unlike weak bulls while world exit with a loss. The strong bears at this point are only willing to short higher. How do you know this? If enough of them were willing to short at trend bars, doji bars, and climaxes. 65. of the bars, they would have been able to overwhelm the bulls and the bars would have been closing on their lows and not in the middle or near the highs. Whenever traders see signs of buying pressure, they assume that the strong bulls are buying at the lows and the strong bears are no longer willing to short at the lows and nor are only willing to sell rallies. So when the strong bulls are buying at the bottom and strong bears are only willing to sell higher, what happens? The market enters a trading range. The strong bears will short at the top and not at the bottom and the strong bulls will buy at the bottom and not at the top. The weak traders usually do the opposite. The weak bulls continue to sell at the lows as they get stopped out, and they buy at the highs as they become afraid that they are missing a new bull trend. The weak bears short at the low, expecting a breakout, and they cover their shorts at a loss at the highs as they become afraid that the market is turning into a bull trend. Everything is relative and subject to constant reassessment, even to the point of totally changing your opinion about the direction of the market. Remember, you can rarely be 60% certain of the market's direction, and that can quickly change to 50 to 50 or even 60% in the other direction. Yes, every bar is either a trend bar or a doji bar. A doji bar means that the bulls and bears are in balance. 
As the doji is forming, if you were to look at a small enough time frame, you would see that either the market went down and then up, creating a sell climax, or up and then down, creating a buy climax. As discussed in the section on climactic reversals in book 3 on climaxes, a climax does not mean that the market is reversing. It simply means that it went too far and too fast in one direction and now is trying the other way. At that point, the bulls keep buying as they try to generate upside follow through and the bears keep shorting as they try to create a bear trend, and the result is usually a sideways market. The sideways trading can be as brief as a single bar or it can last for many bars, but it represents two-sided trading and is therefore a trading range. Since all dojis contain two-sided trading and are usually followed at least briefly by more two-sided trading, dojis should be thought of as one-bar trading ranges. However, sometimes a series of dojis can mean that a trend is in effect. For example, if there is a series of dojis, each with a higher close and most with a high above the high of the prior bar and a low above the low of the prior bar, the market is displaying trending closes, highs, and lows, so a trend is in effect. 66. Figure 2.1 illustrates the shortcoming of restricting the term doji to only those bars with the close being at the same price as the open. Since basic price action analysis works on all time frames, it simply does not make sense to restrict the term to a perfect pattern. The one minute MUNI chart on the left has 10 perfect dojis, despite the bull trend, whereas the monthly chart of Google Gook on the right does not have a single doji. Although several bars look like dojis, even bar 3 with the smallest body still had a close that was 47 cents above its open. Using the classic definition in both cases does nothing to help a trader. In the Gook chart, bar 3 was a great signal bar that behaved exactly as a doji would be expected to behave, and it should be traded that way. In trading, close is close enough and worrying about perfection can only cost you money. Deeper discussion of this chart. Wien Thier is a very large bull trend bar occurring in a bull trend, as in the Gook chart in figure 2.1, it may represent the last, desperate buyers buying, either to cover their losing shorts or to get into a very strong bull trend but at a very late stage. It is a buy climax, and after it forms there often is no one left to buy, leaving the bears in the control of the market. The large bear trend bar that followed created the second bar of a reversal. Figure 2.1 Trend bars, doji bars, and climaxes. 67. On some higher time frame, this would be a perfect two bar reversal. On an even higher time frame, this top would be a large bear reversal bar. After a spike up and a spike down, both the bulls and bears continue to trade as they attempt to create a channel in their direction. This creates a trading range that can be as short as a single bar or it can last many bars. Here, the two-sided trading formed a three-bar lower high. Eventually one side wins. 68. Prices. For trading purposes, it is useful to think of all bars as either trend bars or dojis or non-trend bars, shown in figures 2.1 and 2.2 with AD and the labeling is loose. One bar with a small body could be a doji in one area of price action but a small trend bar in another. The only purpose for the distinction is to help you quickly assess whether one side is in control of the bar or bulls and bears are at a stalemate. Several of the bars in figure 2.2 could arguably be thought of as both trend bars and dojis. Figure 2.3. Trend bars, doji bars, and climaxes. Individual dojis mean that neither the bulls nor the bears are controlling the market, but trending dojis indicate a trend. They are a sign of building buying pressure and this makes a rally more likely. In figure 2.3, the 5 minute chart on the right had 4 dojis in a row, starting at bar 1, each with trending closes, highs and lows. The 15 minute chart on the left shows that they created a bull reversal bar at what was then a new swing low. Deeper discussion of this chart. The day began with a large gap down in figure 2.3, which is a bear breakout, and then a large bear trend bar and was therefore likely to be some kind of bear trend day, and traders were looking to get short. The fourth bar of the day in the 5 minute chart on the right was a bull trend bar and an attempt by the bulls to reverse the day, but it failed, trapping bulls in and bears out. The failed breakout failed and this set up a breakout pullback short bellow that bull trend bar. 
The moving average 20 bar exponential moving average gap bar at bar 4 was in a strong bear trend and was a good short for a test of the low of the day. But since the test usually results in a strong pullback or reversal, traders were looking to buy the new low and the later test of the low of the day. In figure 2.3, bar 1 was also a trend channel line overshoot on both charts, using the prior two swing lows to create the trend line. The market tried to break out of the 70. Price action. Figure 2.3. bottom of the bear channel and accelerate downward but the breakout failed, as most breakouts do. Failures are especially common with trend channel line breakouts since they are an attempt to accelerate a trend and a trend tends to weaken over time. Bar 4 was a doji, which is a one bar trading range but still can be a good setup bar, depending on context. Here, it was a final flag reversal signal bar, an E-flag failed breakout, and a moving average gap bar short setup in a bear trend, and therefore a reliable signal for a test of the bear low. A bear rally to a moving average gap bar usually breaks the bear trend line, and the subsequent sell-off that tests the bear trend's low often is the final leg down before the market tries to reverse. Here, the test of the bar one low of the bear trend was a lower low, and traders should expect at least two legs up. If the test was a higher low, then the move up to bar 4 would have been the first leg up and traders should expect at least one more leg up from that higher low. Figure 2.4. Trend bars, doji bars, and climaxes. 2.4 trend bars without a trend. Just like dojis don't always mean that the market is trendless, a trend bar does not always mean that the market is trending. In figure 2.4, bar 6 was a strong bull trend bar that broke out of a line of dojis. However, there was no follow through. The next bar extended one tick above the trend bar and then closed near its low. The longs exited at one tick below this bear pause bar and new shorts sold there as well, viewing this as a failed bull breakout. No one was interested in buying without more bullish price action, and this caused the market to drop. The bulls tried to protect the low of the bull breakout bar by forming a small bull trend bar. Bar 8 was a setup for a breakout pullback long, although it was never triggered but the market fell through its low, these new early bulls exited again there, and more new shorts came in. At this point, after the bulls failed in two attempts, they would not be willing to buy without substantial price action in their favor, and both they and the bears would be looking for at least two legs down. Trend bars can mean the opposite of what they appear to be telling traders. A beginner might have seen the strong trend bar before bar 3 as a breakout into a new bull trend. An experienced trader would have needed follow through in the form of a second or third bull trend bar before believing that the always in trade had reversed to up. Experienced traders sold the close of the bar, above the bar, the close of bar 3, and below bar 3. The bulls were scalping out of their longs and the bears were initiating new swing shorts. This same kind of bull trap happened. 72. Price action. Figure 2.4. On the bull trend bars that ended bear flags at the bars before bars 7 and 17. The opposite happened at bar 19 where the one of the largest bear trend bars of the day was her beginning of the end of Abir trend. Whenever a large bear trend bar forms in a bear trend that has gone on for 30 or more bars without much of a pullback, it often represents a sell vacuum and an exhaustive sell climax. Sometimes it is the low of the bear trend, and other times, the market falls for a few more bars before trying to reverse. When the strong bulls and bears see some support level and expect it to be tested, they step aside and wait for a large bear trend bar to form. Once it does, they both buy aggressively. The bears buy back their shorts and the bulls buy new longs. Both are expecting a larger correction that should have at least two legs, last at least 10 bars, and poke a little above the moving average. The market might go on to a trend reversal, but traders need to see the strength of the rally before deciding how far they think it will go. Deeper discussion of this chart. They broke out above yesterday's high, as shown in figure 2.4, but reversed down in a failed breakout and a trend from the open bear trend. This was basically a bear trend resumption day, although it was a trading range day for the first several hours. The most important trade of the day was the collapse that began at 11am Pacific Standard Time. 
Once the bar 12 breakout formed, traders needed to consider the possibility of a bear trend resumption. When the next bar had an even larger bear body, traders needed to get short. They could even have waited for the next bar, bar 13, which was another strong bear trend bar. Shorting a collapse after a quiet period is very difficult to do because by this point, traders were complacent, expecting the day to remain quiet. However, this was a very high probability short. Bars 12 to 13 had large bear bodies that did not overlap. They formed a strong bear spike with follow through for several bars. The odds were high that the market would have some kind of measured move down from the high or open of the first bar to the close or low of the final bar of the spike. Since the bars are large and the market was moving fast, traders were afraid of the risk of a large reversal. The best thing to do is to short at the close of bar 13 or the bar before it and use a protective stop above the high of that signal bar. If you are afraid, just short a very small position to be sure to be in the trade. Once you have another strong bear trend bar, like bar 14, move your stop either to break even or to above the high of that bar and hold into the close. Figure 2 point R can end a bear trend. The market was in a strong bear trend on the 5 minute MEE chart on the right in figure 2.5, but reversed up sharply after the large bar 8 bear trend bar. Bar 9 formed a 2 bar reversal at a measured move down from bar 3 to bar 4 measured moves are discussed in book 2. Could traders have watched a smaller time frame chart and then bought as a small reversal pattern was being triggered. The chart on the left is a tick chart with each bar being 100 ticks. After every 100 trades took place, the bar closed and a new bar began. Bar 8 on the 5 minute chart ended at 11.20 am Pacific Standard Time, and bar 8 on the tick chart is made of the final 100 ticks of that 5 minute bar. Bar 9 one the tick chart corresponds to the low of bar 9 one 5 minute chart. One the tick chart, the market formed a double bottom that broke to the downside at bar 9, but the bear breakout failed and the market reversed up. It occurred with a divergence on the stochastics indicator. This is a very orderly, traditional reversal setup, but there was a problem here that made it untradeable. The grey box on the left is the final minute of the 5 minute bar on the right, and it contains 33 bars. That is far too much information for a human to process reliably and then be able to place orders in a timely and accurate way. The markets are controlled by computers, and sometimes prices move very quickly. Trading profitably is always difficult, and it is virtually impossible when speed is critical, because microsecond speed is an edge that only computers have. You cannot hope to make money trading when you're 74. Price Action Figure 2.5 The opponent has a clear advantage. There were many ways for experienced traders to buy one this five minute chart, including buying at the market as bar eight closed or buying above bar nine, and these are discussed in book three. So what took place in the bear spike from bar seven to bar nine? Each bear body became progressively larger, which is a sign of increasing bear strength. However, it is also a sign of a potential sell climax, as it was here. When a bear trend has gone on for 30 or more bars and is at a support level, both bulls and bears step aside and wait for a large bear trend bar, and then buy aggressively. There was a measured move at the bar 9 low, but there are always many support levels present when a trend reverses, even though most are not visible to beginning traders. Because the strong bulls and bears are waiting for an unusually strong bear trend like this before buying, the absence of buying as the market approaches support leads to a sell vacuum and the formation of the large bear trend bar. Once it forms, the bears quickly buy back their shorts and take their profits, and the bulls initiate new longs. Both understand what is taking place and both expect a large correction or even a reversal, so the bears won't look to short and the bulls won't look to sell out of their longs to take profits until the market rallies at least a couple of legs and at least 10 bars, and at least gets above the moving average. The result often is a sharp rally, and it can begin with a very strong bear trend bar. Figure 2.6 Figure 2.6 Trend Transitioning into Trading Range When bears begin to see a new low as a good place to take profits instead of as a great place to short for a new leg down, and bulls see it as a good price to begin to get long, the market is transitioning from a strong trend into more of a two-sided market. 
As shown in figure 2.6, in the bear trend down from bar 2, every time the market fell below the most recent swing low, a bull bar or a bar with a large tail formed within a bar or two. This was a sign of buying pressure, which is cumulative. Mean theory is enough, the bulls can take over a market and create a large bear rally or even a trend reversal. At the bar 13 top, bear bodies started to accumulate, and this selling pressure was